anyway, 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 um, talking about interesting years, let's get on to the artwork that I've chosen today, which some of you may have seen advertised on my stories, but since it's only been up for about two hours um, on my stories, you, you may have missed it. Um, so I am going to turn off commenting, although I do love you all and I will turn you back on again in a minute. Um, and I'm going to introduce you to this work here, which is called Mystic Nativity. So we have gone Christmassy. We have gone Christmassy today. Christmas tree, Mystic Nativity. This is by Botticelli. It's in the National Gallery. It dates to about um, 1500. And it is a funny little work. I think it, um, I think it definitely comes into the category of weird artworks. Um, Botticelli. We've met him before, actually. We met him all the way back in April um, with the birth of Venus. And I think I said then that his name means little barrel. Um, so Sandro Botticelli, so his surname means little barrel. And I always thought or had thought that that was because he was sort of short and perhaps a little bit stout of stature. Um, but it turns out that he gets his name from his brother. So his brother was bigger than him and I think quite rotund. Um, and so Botticelli is the, the, the little barrel. Botticelli, the little barrel. Um, I think of him, when I think of him, I think of him like Russell Grant and I, I can't help it. Whenever I think of Botticelli, I have an image of Russell Grant in my head. Anyway, moving on. So, Mystic Nativity. So this is a lovely nativity scene. Um, we've got the, the Holy Family in the, in the centre here. Um, okay, they are sort of in front of a, a, a cave so there are sort of they've got a wooden structure so you can see here there's sort of a, a, a wooden structure with a few angels sitting on the roof um, and then there and then there's a cave behind the wooden structure um, with trees behind so it's kind of it's quite an interesting cave um, in that it's well it's not a cave is it what do you call something that's a sort of a structure that has no back to it Bethlehem it ain't let's put it that way it is not Bethlehem we are definitely not there and there might be a reason for that which I'll come on to later on um, but you know but so far so relatively normal we've got the holy family here um, Joseph who is facing away from us and I always think that in this image he looks like he might be wearing one of those bald wigs um, you know sort of the, the, the bald um, top and then the sort of fuzzy not fuzzy but curly hair all around like a probably like um and not a very nice wig maybe anyway we can't see joseph jesus is absolutely huge especially for a newborn but as he should be because he is the most important person in this image so that's completely fine and mary as you would expect of botticelli is really gorgeous um, and then behind her there's an ox and an ass and so you know okay a fairly normal scene either side of them if I just um, sort of scroll out again um, we have angels who are introducing the um, the three kings to the the left hand side to the the holy family and on the right hand side you have the shepherds a little bit hard to tell the difference to be honest because the three kings aren't dressed up to the nines as they are quite often in um in artwork in in um, nativity scenes but um but they're there nonetheless but then it's sort of like three different realms. It's as though then the portal to heaven has opened and these angels have come dangling down and there are 12 angels dancing around over this, um, over the, over the scene. Lovely. I mean, look at those beautiful fluid moves. Um, absolutely glorious little um, little passage that is very often depicted on Christmas cards or cards as a, as a standalone feature so we've got the the angels coming down from above plus you can see right at the top there um, uh, an inscription this is in Greek um, I will tell you sort of what it says later I mean if I translated it properly then we'd all still be like uh, what? We wouldn't really be much the, the wiser, but we'll, we'll talk about that later. And that actually has a bearing on what's going on 
on the uh, sort of on the, the bottom part of the um, of the image, which is the most peculiar bit. So the bottom part of the image we have. You can see three couples embracing in the most awkward ways possible. Um, so this is in fact three angels who are embracing um, men, ordinary mortals. Um, and then you can see to the right, to the left, um, actually in between, sort of in the, in the very foreground, in between the couples in, in, in the middle and then to the right hand side, you can see sort of some grey bits don't come up very well um, because this is quite a difficult image in, in many respects to show on, um, on, on Instagram Live, but it doesn't stop us, does it? Um, those are devils. So we, in fact, have seven little devils in a nativity scene. Okay, what's that about? Let me show you the little devils a bit close up. So these are the ones on the right, on the um, left-hand side, and then to the right-hand side there. Um, so you can see they're quite funny. Little horns and, and wings and their, um, uh, what do they call them? I was going to say tripods. It's not the right, um, triad? Is that the right word? The, the forky things, the, the devil's forks, you know what I mean. Um, but they're all running off, so they're all basically scurrying off back down to the bowels of hell, um, presumably, because these, um, you know, the angels are winning. Um, so the angels are embracing these mortals, so the devils have lost the cause. And then the birth of baby Jesus, that's really put the kibosh on things. Um, and so they're disappearing back down to hell to report to the devil that they really haven't been able to uh, to capture any more souls for him on this occasion. Um, so that, as I said, kind of relates to the inscription at the top of the painting, which is in Greek. But the inscription at the top of the painting talks about um, the fact that Botticelli believed that he was in the period, they were living through the period um, just before the second coming and that it was an apocalyptic period. So I heard this um, work described as a nativity scene or as a, as a, as a bomb wrapped in a nativity scene or an apocalyptic um, event wrapped in a nativity scene. Um, because yes, so he thought that um, there was potentially going to be an, an apocalypse followed by the second coming. Okay, head exploding? Um, I hope not. He painted this in 1500. And if we thought that the year 2000 was, um, you know, full of stress and, and fear, you know, that Y2O thing, and, you know, we thought the internet was going to melt and everything was going to go wrong. Um, well, that had absolutely nothing on what people thought in 1499. They seriously thought, many of them, that the end of the world was going to happen. Um, and not only that, so um, so it's not only the end of the, the world, so not, not only the end of the century, but it's the end of half a millennia. You know, it, it was all kind of, it was all going on. And, uh, and the people of Florence actually were the most terrified. And that was because in the 1490s, a gentleman called Savonarola had come to Florence. Um, he was a friar, but also a very charismatic preacher, a, a real leader um, with his with his sermons. A uh, very, very forceful personality. He rather ironically had been invited to come to Florence by Lorenzo de' Medici, who in fact died in 1492. Um, but then um, he, Savonarola kind of proceeded to sort of preach almost against the Medici because he was very much preaching that, um, that Florence was a, a corrupt and, and a vice-ridden city and, and, you know, and people were far too attached to luxury goods. Um, and he encouraged people to burn their luxury possessions. So 
paintings were burnt, books were burnt, um, wigs, vanity, um, the, all, all sorts of things that, that sort of pertained to, to luxuries and to, to vanity. So this was the original bonfire of the vanities. This is, I think, where Tom Wolfe got it from. I love that book. If you haven't read Bonfire of the Vanities, amazing book. I remember the, uh, what was it, the, uh, the social x-rays and the lemon tarts. Um, anyway, if you haven't read Bonfire of the Vanities, good, good read, really good read. Um, so, so people had to, 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 to burn things. Savonarola really kind of, you know, was, was, getting, was, was taking hold of the, the, the people of, of Florence and they believed in him quite a lot. And then, then, in 1494, it looked like the French were going to invade. They were already marching through what we now call Italy. It wasn't called Italy at the time. Um, they were coming closer and closer to Florence. Um, they, they, you know, people of Florence believed that the, they were going to be um, overrun by the, the, the French army. Um, and Savonarola stepped in. So Lorenzo de' Medici had died. There was a bit of a political vacuum, which is probably why the French were heading for them. Savonarola actually persuaded him, it's a whole other story, but persuaded them not to invade Florence. And so he sort of had traction then for his belief because he very much believed that um, the apocalypse was coming, 1500 was going to be the apocalypse, but if people could burn all, their, all of their possessions, if they could adhere to a better lifestyle, if they could be pious, if they could be humble and, um, and luxury free um, and wig free, um, they they would be that Florence would be essentially the new Jerusalem. Florence would be the place of the second coming of Jesus. Got that? So this is really what this entire painting about is about. Is about so Botticelli painted this in 1500. Savonarola actually um, the tide turned against him because the Florentines they liked their luxury a bit too much they weren't really about to give in to this not uh, not really um, and so Savonarola himself was tried and was burnt um, burnt at the stake he was hanged and then burnt um, and um, but Botticelli so that was two years before this was painted but Bot Botticelli clearly either painted this for a follower of Savonarola um, or himself, which is quite likely agreed with, maybe not all, but with, with many of the things that, that Savonarola, um, Savonarola talked about. Very, very religious and, and actually scholars always talk about the fact that Botticelli's art changed very, very much pre-Savonarola, post-Savonarola. Um, and so he probably painted this, as I said, it's not Bethlehem, the, the, the little, the devils could be the sort of the Medici being chased away. Um, so it's basically, you know, get thee gone, luxury loving devils, go back to hell um, and let us be good, pious, humble people so that we are ready to accept the second coming of Jesus, which is what is happening here. Looks very much like the first coming to me, but I guess they didn't know what the second coming was going to look like at that point, um, apart from the fact that it was going to be in the Florentine countryside, obviously, which is where it is. Um, and so that is what this inscription alludes to and and that is what this nativity is all about so a nativity with a difference the the, the second nativity it's also interesting to note that um that botticelli he um he signed this but it is one of his i think it's his only work on canvas um so normally artists would work on on panel so on wood um but this is on canvas possibly because it could be rolled up and therefore hidden. So he was possibly either he or his patron or both of them. We don't know, as I, as I mentioned, I think, um, who this was created for, um, but it meant that they could roll up the, uh, the, the painting and hide it. They might have been worried that they would be um, sort of persecuted or even put to 
to, to trial and possibly even put to death for being followers of, of Savonarola. So it was a, it was a political tightrope in these days. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's, so that's quite interesting. And it's also, um, it's also lovely, the, the dome on the top um, probably is a memory for Botticelli of something that he experienced in his childhood because one of the churches, Santa Felice, I think just outside of Florence, was very famous for its annunciation, um, almost like plays basically. Um, and it's been it's recorded that Brunelleschi, who was the architect of the, the, the dome in Florence, Florence Cathedral, he created a golden dome for one of these performances. And the golden dome um, was, I think it must have had a hole in the middle, and it was suspended from the ceiling. And children dressed as angels would dance around it and the dome would rotate. Um, so very much like this. And then the angel Gabriel would, would be suspended and kind of come down um, from the center of this dome. So really spectacular, really elaborate, really um, impactful. And so I think the young Botticelli would have seen that. And, and that is, um, is borne out in this this image here um, which is kind of lovely isn't it all those those years later um, that he has he's brought that into this this rather strange rather wonderful um, rather odd work of art one last thing I'm going to point out um, is that just to have a look at the ass there just look so just above Mary's head the, the markings it looks like a sort of casual marking uh, but I don't think it is it's the cross isn't it um, just reminding us that uh, that Jesus isn't any ordinary baby but he's going to die on the cross to save mankind who knows what the second Jesus would do uh, but there we go Botticelli's mystic nativity full of weirdness, um, really quite extra extraordinary, really quite lovely in many parts. Um, and uh, I don't think we're going to ask Joseph where he got his wig from. He wasn't able to, uh, he didn't have to burn it. Oh, here's Savonarola, by the way. Um, there you go, looking very, very stern. And I don't know who painted that. I can't remember. Um, it's a portrait. It's not Botticelli. I can't remember. I'll try and put it in the notes. On that note, I shall take images off and put comments on. And there we go. Emma, hello. How nice. Um, yeah, so there we go. Um, Mystic Nativity. I was looking for weird nativity scenes. I thought that might be quite funny today. Um, but the kind of aren't, I didn't really find anything that, uh, that took my fancy enough. And then I remembered Mystic Nativity by Botticelli and I thought, okay, that's the perfect one to talk about. Um, so next week is, thank you, Andrew. Thank you, thank you, Holly. Um, next week is Christmas Eve. I'm still gonna be here. Are you gonna be here Christmas Eve? Why not? So I thought we could, I don't know, maybe do a little look back of things if you've got things that you um, remember or kind of half remember or that you thought were funny or um, crazy. Um, love anything that says mystic. Yes, I thought this would be for you, Holly. Um, let, yeah, message me, message me. What I might do um, this week, as you can tell, I haven't really thought about it perhaps in, as much as I should have done, maybe. Um, I've been writing Christmas cards and wrapping presents. Um, and um, yeah, so what I thought I would do is maybe just put up um, many of the, the, the covers that sort of might remind you of things that we've, that we've done over the, the past uh, about nine months nearly, isn't it? Um, and I guess and if there's anything that you wanted to revisit, then please let me know. I might pick a few highlights and perhaps we'll do the same um, on New Year's Eve because we'll be here then as well. Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. I think we're going to do them. Why not? Who knows who might be around? Um, 
So, uh, yes. Have a lovely week, everybody. Um, look out for my stories. And, oh, also, if you don't follow Joe's, um, Joe's Art History podcast, I am talking about Titian, the, the, the Poesia paintings, um, not about the content of them, but about uh, what happened to the paintings themselves, because they have quite a rich history. So on Joe's Art History podcast this week, um, she posted that on Tuesday. Um, so have a little listen or follow her. Um, her podcasts are great, actually, really, really fun. She's, um, she's a, a lovely, lovely um, Glaswegian lady. Um, so I'm on that one this week and I can't remember what else. If you want a great Christmas do, um, then my Christmas event, there's still a few slots left, not so many, but there are a few slots and I've done a pared down version. So if you want to do it with fewer people, then um, I'm your girl. Um, and otherwise, have a great week. Um, I'm sorry that maybe some parties and so on have been cancelled, but um, yeah, as I said, you can join me online if you wish to. I will see you on Christmas Eve. Thank you all for joining. Oh, hello, Roz. We've just finished. Um, that's a shame. I will see you all very soon. Lots of love. Bye.